Hey everyone, I'm Will Summerlin. I'm an AI analyst at Merck. I'm excited to jump into AI here today. So this year we focused our AI research in two areas. The first is cost declines, and we'll explore cost declines over the last six years in AI, and then talk about expectations for future cost declines through 2030. The second area of focus is market sizing, and we'll talk about the overall opportunity for AI and what it looks like today versus what it could look like in 2030. So just jumping in, um, before we get into the numbers, I want to frame why cost declines matter. And if you look at the adoption of technology historically, cost declines have led to democratization. So the less expensive a technology or innovation is, the more people have access to it. And we see the same thing happening with AI. So typically, the larger a model is, the larger a neural network, the more performant it is, the better it performs. And the problem right now is, is neural networks are quite expensive to train. And so if we look at something like GPT-3, which is a 175 billion parameter language model, um, and it's considered to be a, a top performing model, in 2020, it costs about $4.6 million to train. And you know that's quite a bit of money. And if we think about research organizations, universities, nonprofits, oftentimes that's they don't have the budget for that. Um, but with cost declines, it's becoming much less expensive. And so as cost declines, we're seeing more access and creating more availability for, for uh, organizations like universities and nonprofits. At the other end of the spectrum, well-funded organizations like OpenAI are able to continue pushing the boundaries of what's possible in terms of model size and performance. So as costs decline, they can continue increasing the size of the models and the performance of their models. So just to put this into, into context, uh, again, GPT-3 cost about $4.6 million to train in 2020. If we went back to 2015, we estimate it would have cost about $875 million to train a model of that size. So we saw a cost decline at about 65% a year from, from $875 million in 2015 to $4.6 million in 2020. And based on our analysis, we think that costs will continue to decline at about 60% a year. So we could see a cost decline all the way down to $500 by 2030. So that's a decline from $875 million to just over $500 in 15 years, which is pretty incredible. And to break this down a little bit further, typically when we model cost declines at ARC, uh, we do so with Wright's Law. And that's exactly what we did with AI. So we conducted two different studies to model cost declines in AI. The first is the cost of compute. So this is the cost of hardware and, and the computers that are actually used to train neural networks. And you know we believe, based on our analysis, that those costs will decline at about 39% a year through 2030. The second study we did looked at the amount of compute required by neural networks. And based on our analysis here, we think that's going to decline at about 37% a year through 2030. And so those combine to create cost declines of about 60% a year. Um, which is how we get that GPT-3 estimate of $4.6 million in 2020, all the way down to $500 in 2030. So shifting to the market opportunity for AI, we think one of the most useful applications of AI will be making human knowledge workers more productive. And knowledge workers are software developers, accountants, lawyers, etc. And we did an analysis here to look at the types of tasks these knowledge workers do on a daily basis and try to predict how much AI could improve their productivity. And on average, we think that AI will increase the output of knowledge workers by about 140%. So that more than doubles the output of a knowledge worker, uh, which is really, really exciting for a number of reasons. One of which is that in many of these job categories like software developers, there's actually a labor shortage right now. If you talk to any large tech company, it's quite difficult to attract and retain software developers. And while it's really hard to just make more software developers, um, we think that AI could bridge that gap and make the software developers that we do have more productive. So we're very much excited to see how that plays out. And you know, it's, it's not a pipe dream. This is something that's, that's real and it's here today. OpenAI has a tool called Codex, which could be thought of as Google Translate for software engineers. A developer can put in an English language command, like make a red ball bounce on the screen, and Codex will actually generate software code, functional software code, 
um, that they can use in production. And there are software engineers who are using Codex today in their real jobs. According to OpenAI, it's about 37% accurate. So it can complete coding tasks with about 37% accuracy. But based on the rate of improvement over the last year, we think that that will increase and improve quite quickly. So if we zoom out and look at the macro here, uh, we think that by 2030, AI can improve the output or increase the output of human knowledge workers by about $56 trillion a year. And to put this in perspective, by 2030, we think knowledge workers will have an output of about 41 trillion, just alone, just humans. But if we combine humans with AI, we think that output will hit $97 trillion. So that's a huge step up in human output. Now, we think that companies and organizations are going to be willing to pay about 25 cents for every incremental dollar in output, which would suggest the market for AI software will be about $14 trillion in 2030. Now, enterprise or companies currently spend about a trillion dollars a year on enterprise software. And so we would see a step up from a trillion dollars a year today to $14 trillion in 2030, uh, which would represent a 42% compound annual growth rate. So the demand for hard or demand for software will likely drive a demand for hardware. The more models that we have and the larger these models become, the more compute we need to actually train these models. And so we think that the, the market for compute for AI will increase from about, from about 17 billion today to about $1.7 trillion in 2030. And to put this in the perspective of overall IT spend, uh, IT spend historically has hovered between four and 5% of GDP. And so in 2020 or 2022, companies spend just under $5 trillion a year on IT. And consensus forecasts would suggest that by 2030, that number will be just over $5 trillion. But we think the demand for AI could actually increase that number by about $15 trillion suggesting that spend in IT could grow from just under $5 trillion today to just over $20 trillion by 2030. So if we're right, the adoption of AI could lead to one of the greatest periods of wealth creation in human history. AI companies today are worth about $2.5 trillion. And our analysis suggests that by 2030, those companies could be worth, or companies in general could be worth $87 trillion. And this is a combination of companies building both AI applications, the underlying models and software that power those applications, as well as the hardware and compute that's used to train those models. So we're really excited for the next uh, year in AI. We're looking forward to many advancements on the research front, continued commercial adoption, and we'll certainly keep you informed. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, as well as our website, arc-invest.com, and we look forward to reconnecting soon. Thank you.